Check it out. She's working right here. If you look, it's mining Raptorium on both its cores. This is the B250, the one that I was just trying to build live yesterday and it wouldn't work because the socket was screwed up. Now let's get back to the garage and get this thing on that mining rig. What's going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. So yesterday in the live stream, we actually assembled this 1660 Ti amp version, 12 card GPU Ethereum mining rig. And we ran into some issues. As you guys can see, we are still using the ASRock H110 that accepts 13 GPUs that we had in the crypto mining garage. When you guys saw me open this board for the first time, the pins, on this CPU were completely mushed. Like, not all of them, but one section. There was one or two pins that were just not having it. They were bent over. After the live stream, it took me about an hour, but I sat down and I moved the pin back to a spot where it would start to register once again. So I am super excited about that, and I am never going to remove this CPU. <laughs> so this G3930 is going to live in this motherboard USB connections right here. I wanna see if they're going to accept 12 NVIDIA GPUs. This is basically a larger version of a RebTech motherboard, but obviously it's not because it doesn't have a laptop CPU. This is, you know, a G3930, like I just said. It's an Intel Celeron processor, and I don't think it's gonna have any issues. I guess let's give it a shot. So I wanna explain one thing to you guys just before I start. This 1200 watt ATX PSU, right here is feeding this entire rig it's 990 watts or so give or take a little bit it is feeding from each vga cable to gpu and riser combinations as you can see the splitters going from gpu to riser is then split again into a vga cable probably not recommended but these cables can go up to around 288 watts if i'm not mistaken I'm like 90% positive on that number. And I mean, it's running fine. These cards only pull about 70 watts or so a piece. So at the wall, probably 80 or so. I could do the math, but I mean, 990 watts, 1200 watt platinum server PSU off of 120 volts, it's working fine. But I am going to swap out to a 1200 watt server PSU with a breakout board so I can feed all of these cards individually. I don't really like the fact that they're split more than once. It, it kind of bothers me and I wouldn't want to leave it like that, but I mean, I'm sure it could be done. It's just not for me. So real quick pointer, if you guys are going to build a similar rig with a server PSU like this and you do not have 240 volts, you could not run this entire rig. Again, 990 watts, 1200 watt server PSU, but this is off of 240. This thing is only good for 900 watts off of 120 volts. So it is necessary to feed this with 240 if you're gonna to try to do this setup like I have right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this motherboard into this frame right now. I'm gonna disconnect all of these splitters. Obviously, we're gonna shut down the unit. I'm gonna take out this ATX PSU. I'm gonna put the server PSU on the bottom there. And we're gonna to try to get everything fired up with all 12 NVIDIA GPUs in here. So without further ado, let's get this thing shut off. All right, so as you guys can see, I got the motherboard installed. I have an SSD with a USB connection, basically right back there behind the motherboard. If you guys can see that, just a Kingston SSD. I have a HDMI going to the mini screen because I wanna see if this thing will boot up before we put any of the GPUs in it. All right, so let's turn this thing on. I'm not gonna fully let it boot up into Hive. I just wanna make sure it registers on the screen. So as you can see right now, we're at three watts. Let's hit this power button. Oh, and fun fact, this does not have a power button. It's ready to mine. So as soon as you turn on the power, it should kick right on. And we are booting into Hive OS. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna shut this down quick because I don't want it to fully boot. I don't want it to erase all my clocks with no GPUs on there. So now what we need to do, I need to take all these USBs. I'm gonna kind of try to strategically place them like somewhat neat. I wanna cable manage it. So this rig is all nice and tight. 
I know that's going to be kind of difficult, but these guys are going to be all over the place. So my plan is probably to get the top row on like this group of six and the bottom row on this group of six. I don't know if that'll work, but that's going to be my goal. So let me do that and then we will plug in all of the power cables. All right, not too shabby, right? So <laughs> this was way harder to cable manage than I thought. These USBs, obviously you guys know, they aren't super long. So basically all I did was group six and six, and then I tied them together right up above that. So I actually fed this half right here to these six cards on this side of the frame because it was the easiest thing to do. And then I did these six on the back half and I basically just slung them up and everything just kind of rides over to each GPU as you guys can see. So I got some uh, actual Velcro straps on them and now what I need to do is focus on putting in all of these six pin by six pin male PCIe adapters. So let me get all those hooked up, I'll cable manage that and then what we'll do is bring this entire rig downstairs. All right, so there she is all wired up. I think it's pretty uh, decently cable managed. It was, not gonna lie, a little challenging to get all the USBs and all the cables straight. But again, like I said, I ended up putting these six on this side together and these six on this side together. Now all we have to do is get some fans on here. The GPURisers.com actually has some really nice white fans. So I'm waiting for mine to come in. As soon as they do, I'll be slapping those on this and it's gonna look absolutely fantastic with the white risers. All right, so let's get this thing down into my basement. I'm gonna grab the trip light PDU that's actually over there, I have a 30 amp one that I have not brought downstairs yet. I gotta plug it into the 240, then we'll plug this into that and we'll get it fired up, make sure it registers in Hive and hopefully all 12 of these cards will actually register in this motherboard. Let's do it. All right, so there is the 30 amp PDU. That's the first time I plugged this thing in. Again, it is up there on the wall. And here is the rig. So now we just gotta plug it in and see. Apologize for the lighting. I know it stinks down here. That is the reason I am in the garage now. <laughs> so let's plug this thing in. Okay, now that's plugged in lights on which means this thing has power now let's see all the cards are spinning and it's registering hive i am completely stunned that i fixed this uh, socket on this motherboard if you can see right there it says 12 gpus this motherboard is working with 12 NVIDIA cards. I am so excited. All right, let's refresh this page. You know what? I just plugged in the Ethernet cable because I forgot I didn't set up the Wi-Fi on this board. I set up the Wi-Fi on the H110. Now that I just plugged that in, let's see if she registers. And she does. Yes. All right, let's see. Let's see. Hopefully it all starts mining and then we're in good shape. Look at that, zero through 11. And these things just cranked up to 100% fan. That is exactly what we wanted because obviously the low clearance here and not having any type of back fans, I want these things to be as cooled as possible. So for now, it's just gonna disperse the heat into my basement freely. We have every one of these cards over 30 mega hash. As you guys can see, again, I'll leave my clocks to these cards down in the description below, but it's just gonna freely basically spit heat into the basement, into this uh, old studio. I need to take down my screen still and move some to the garage, but let me show you guys what I'm thinking. So this is the little playroom area that I like built for my kids. I still gotta finish the walls and stuff, but right here, basically clear out this stuff. Bunch of junk, I know, apologize for the mess, but my grow tent is going to go right here. Then I'm going to exhaust it straight out the top or out the side and up, hopefully just like right on the actual top itself. And I'm going to put it into this part right here. This is the return duct. So basically on your furnace off of the top of it, if you guys can see the gray right there, 
off the top of your furnace, that's blowing up. Okay, and everything's getting sucked back down to the right and all the way down to the bottom. So this is the one you want to go into because when your furnace turns on, it's going to suck the heat from the tent out. I still need a fan on there to blow into the system, but with the fan blowing into the system daily, I can just turn my circulating fan on for the furnace itself. So the fan in there is just spinning and it's not really using much energy because it's not firing. So if the grow tent right here, feeding heat into this and the fan running basically 24 seven, it's going to disperse the heat throughout my house constantly. It's gonna save uh, you know, some of the heating bill, which is nice. So yeah, that's gonna do it. So this is pulling a total of three amps. It's about a thousand watts. We already tested it out. We know that it was like 990, give or take a little bit, but hashing at 30 mega hash per card, this thing's gonna put out some nice, uh, just heat in my basement for now, because honestly my basement's pretty cold. It's kind of uh, shocking to be honest. My kids come down here and play and they gotta like bundle up in a little sweatshirt now because uh, there's no heat down here. I don't have anything running. The ASIC is off, I don't even have that on. So yeah, eventually this thing's gonna go into my ductwork system and uh, I'll show you guys that step by step. But as always guys, I appreciate you all for watching. Hopefully you guys have a great Thanksgiving and I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.